in this video I wanted to show how can we create a basic setup for our for each loop that is going to create a pattern selection and with this pattern that we're gonna copy these kind of loops around it for our tube now I start with putting out for each loop I'm gonna just for each whatever for each number so it's what is good about this is going actually gonna give us iteration automatically so just sweep in sweep connect to the begin make sure the method is fetch feedback at the end of the block make sure it's connected to the feedback each iteration like that so this is our counter now let's put down a group by range so in group by range let's invert the range and let's start with selecting you can see it's going to automatically going to start selecting the amount of polygons that you want so for us it's kind of a tedious to select the edge loops that you want so what I want to do is just go to the sweep and copy this relative reference from each shift C and just paste inside so now we have a reference to this channel on how many columns we have and now you can see we are select edge loop and now if you want to expand the selection let's create a spare parameter go to the edit parameters and just the integer value and for the name it's just drop it down drop it down and Let's call it, let's call it length, apply, accept, and that's it. Now all we have to do is multiply our channel to sweep reference with the channel that we just created, which is length, like that. And that's it. You can see now with the length parameter we can, we can control how many edge loops we actually selecting. Now to make our selection dynamic, we have to include this iteration in our group by range. So all you have to do with start, just let's multiply it by the attribute of our iteration counter. So detail, the nodes, node is for each count one, attribute is iteration, and then zero by single fold. So now let's go to the end of the block and let's disable this group promote for now to say take a look at our result you can see when we change the iteration we are now changing also the amount of loop that we are selecting now so basically at iteration 2 we are selecting 27 that's only one basically it's basically the same thing without it so that's we are multiplying this result with one and I guess basically getting the same thing because iteration actually starts at the zero so if you go to the one it's actually going to multiply by zero and that means there's nothing going to be selected so to make you easy make it easier just go to the group by range and just at the detail go inside make it inside the brackets and just after the detail brackets are over just add plus one like that so now we have a parity with our iteration amount and how many loops we are selecting based off of length and the amount of loops that we have in our sweep. And now the only thing we need to worry about is creating a dynamic groups in our loops because right now we are basically overriding the same group one that we just created for each one of these. And if you take a look at this selection and the groups that's going to be a, for now it's going to be a primitive group. You see we have basically the same one group and it's basically overriding for it. So what I want to do is actually create a group 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 for each iteration that we just create. So what we can do is go to the group by range and start writing in this group name thing. But the problem is that if let's say I want to start writing a function inside, something like detail, something like that, you can see it's not picking up it as a function, it basically thinks it's a name for a group. So what we have to do is put in a back quote before we start writing any functions in it. So let's say I put down the back quotes, which is basically just uh, the key before the one on a keyboard. So back quotes and I start writing detail, you can see it's automatically start to pick up all of our functions. So and for our group name, we want to use the go back to the Houdini help you str cat function which basically returns the con concentration of two strings and two strings in our thing will be the string group and the other one is going to be our dynamic 
counter of our iteration. Let's just start writing it. str cat in a bracket. First of all, a string in the first thing is going to be just a group. Remember, and back quotes, and for a group, remember it has to be in a quote. And the second one is one to, we can just copy the detail of this, because it's basically the same thing. We want to get the detail attribute of our iteration. And that's about it. If we take a look at it, you can see we are now at the group tree. But if we go to the at the block end, you can see we have group group zero, one, two, and three. And if we iterate inc increase our iteration, you can see we are getting these groups amount. Let's just get back to the our promote and let's enable it. But of course, we have to create the groups in here. So we can do that. Just go to the group range, select this, copy it, and paste inside group and a new name like that. And now. All we have to do, let's take a look at our groups. It's called now it's, we have promoted them as edge groups, like that. Now we have our groups. And let's just make maybe, let's make our groups maybe a little bit bigger. So for each iteration, we want to get not three, but let's say one to maybe ten. Like that. So we are now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Selecting ten, and for each iteration, we have less of a group. Now let's do something cool with this, with these groups. What we can do is actually create a right edge, and there's actually labs edge group to curves, and this edge loops to curves. But we can do on a group, just write in group, group, and then the asterisk. You basically need to select everything, every group, every group that has a group with, in its title. So you can see. So obviously, if this would be something else other than a group, we would reference it that that. But you can see we are now isolated our our circles. What you can do is actually there's already we can create the circles around our tube. You can see like that. But if you want to go a little bit deeper. Edges to curves. Now, what we can do is resample it. Maybe make it a little bit of a let's disable the thickness. Let's create this. Maybe not so. Now you can see it's really not very rounded at all. So what I want to do is select the subdivision curves like that. See now we're getting a very nice circle shape. Now what you can do is fuse it, because I'm going to show if you didn't fuse it, and now we can sweep it. We can sweep it into round tube like that. And now we can just select these two and, and merge them together. So now we have created this kind of circles around it. And what's good about this, since we have referenced our channels, we can change the column amount, you can see it does not freak out. And of course you want to make them more or less. Or in one side you can see we are basically squishing them together. And then if uh, how many iterations you want, we can round them about this kind of around the our tube like that. So that's pretty cool. Now to make our work a little bit more streamlined, let's put down a null node. Let's call it Control and with this control node, let's color it maybe like red. Go inside its parameters, unclick for bit linking parameters, apply, and now what we can do is just start dragging our controls that are essential for our loops selection. So length, let's drag in length. So what else we did we change? Well we need our iterations also like that and for this we could also get our column amount okay I'll just drag it inside here and of course you could start maybe dragging also radius just for now I think it's going to be fine because they do can be until they do have to be very specific so 
Now you can see our length of selection. So let's see how many. Make sure you, for more intuitive work, just make say iteration is at one. And then you just select how many you want to select. So now it's very easy to understand. So length is five. We are selecting one, two, three, four, four, five edge loops. And now we can just iterate it over time like that. And to finish off this tutorial, what I want to do is actually save this as a HDA. So first of all, let's keep a sweep. Let's delete this one. We want, we want to save. So we want to keep the sweep. Remember that this sweep has to be in here. It has to be also sweep one because we are referencing inside this. So if you are importing other from sweep and it's other called, so remember that to change it. Change this reference to the other sweep or whatever. And in here, I think edge curves can also be, and all of this can also be in a HDA. So, what I'm going to do is select all of this, create a sub network. Let's call it maybe something like pattern edge selection. Let's copy this, and inside, create digital asset. It's going to give us operation label accept. Just keep it a default, accept, and that's it. Let's put down a pattern edge selection. You can see we have now our HDA. And what I like to do, if you don't have to, if you haven't selected or you haven't created all of these extra details, what you can do is just explode it out of it. So in actions, just extract elements. We are basically getting the old sub network outside of it. So we don't have to deal with the sub networks like in here. For easy control, what you can do is just go to the control node, select it, and there's an option up here. It's follow the selection. Basically, going to pin this down, and it does not change when we change our nodes display flags. Then just you can go go and put display flag on our for each end, and you can see we can easily change our groups like that. So that's one trick with the pinning of the controls of this other node that we are not having display flag on. And once you're done with it, you can just select it again and you can see it goes back. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and see you next time.